That's going to pull in tons of tons of feeds. So now it's pulled in all the all the Twitter things around EdChat. Uh, we do another one and do EdTech. Right, and it creates this new section over here. So I always think about it with my social studies background as what if my students are studying current events and we're talking about those in class. We've got the Twitter feed, but we've also got our own conversation happening up here. So there it goes. That's pretty, I think that's a pretty, pretty neat feature of it. And again, if I want to kill the whole room off, I can hit the delete button and get rid of it all right now if I want to as well. You can also put in a, a list of links. You have a you can put in a list of things that you want people to work on. So let's do titles like today's assignments. Uh, we'll say you know take out the papers. Okay. We'll add another one, and we'll say and the trash. And we'll say, don't talk back. Perfect. So now in this, now in this room, we have a list of assignments for the kids to work on for the day. Really, really uh, nice combination of a whole bunch of stuff that we can put in one place. Uh, really like it. So, good question. How do you share the URL of students? Uh, you know. You could use this. You could use tozzle.com forward slash t forward slash z j m f y i a. Yeah, good luck getting all your kids to write that one down correctly. So yeah, you could use a you could use a QR code. Uh, the tool I use for QR there's two tools I use for QR codes. One is QR Droid, uh, and they have a little QR code generator. In fact, I just made a video about this today. Uh, Shameless plug for myself there, I guess. Uh, and I'll generate the QR code, and then I might print that out and have kids. Yeah, <laughs> uh, someone just pointed out. Yes, this is my April first update. Yeah, I just did this. Uh, just did this about 12 hours ago. Uh, so yeah, you can put in a video. You can put in uh, the QR code that way. The other tool I use for QR code sometimes is goo.gl. And the reason for that I like goo.gl in the classroom is it'll give me a count of how many times a link has been used. So again, I just took that Tosla URL, I put it into goo.gl, G-O-O.gl, and shorten it down. And when I go to that's still a hard URL for kids to to copy down, but if I go to details you'll see there's a QR code that I could again print out or post somewhere and have kids scan. Uh, yeah, you could have them write that down as well. But you'll see there's a total clicks usage right here. So in my classroom, if I'm... Yeah, yeah, if you have a smart board, you can post it on the smart board. Uh, LCD projector, it'll work too depending on the resolution of the LCD projector. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways to, to distribute the QR codes, um, but I just love the the click the click factor. I can see how many I've got 25 kids in the room, and I only have 18 clicks. I've got seven kids who are not on the right place. Uh, I need to find out who those who those kids are. That's one of the that's one of the great things about goo.gl, uh, g o o g l is that tool, and you'll also see there in my account. that it's keeping a record of every link I've ever shortened in the history of my account, which is going back now for 4,366 links. Um, and will show me, I'll look at the details from that one from March 31st, or March 5th, sorry, March 5th. Uh, I can see all kinds of stuff, where people came from, what kind of platform they used, um, where they came from, how they, how they get to the, that link. Lots of options there. Yeah. All right. So one other uh, kind of back channel tool that I want. Uh, can you save chats from this? 
Oh, and uh, someone has just pointed out that, yes, there's a goo.gl uh, Chrome extension. In fact, I might even have it installed and I'm not using it. Um, no, I don't have it installed right now. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, so what was the other question? Uh, yeah, you do have to refresh it in order to see the the stuff that I, that I've added in. Uh, that is one drawback to it. So if I if I added in a, the assignment section and the kids hadn't refreshed their screen, that that is one one little drawback to it. Uh, now, in terms of if you want to keep a record of this, uh, really all you have is the option to bookmark it. You don't really have anything else in terms of uh, can you export it as a PDF or anything like that. That's the one drawback to it. So, um, yeah. so, I'm going to close out of that and we're going to take a look at take a look at Padlet and then we'll get into playing a couple of games together and if time permits we'll get back to 81 Dash which I just closed out of in my in my screen as well. So, uh, Padlet's not so much a back channel tool as it is more of a brainstorming tool and a sharing tool. Now, it's, like I said, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, they do have some curl maps. They do have uh, some browser extensions now as well, but we're not going to look at those tonight. We're just going to look at kind of the, the basics of how it works and how you might use it with students. So, uh, I'm already in my account here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Oh, just trying to get caught up on the chat here. Yeah, okay, sorry. Just making sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new Padlet here. And just hit that. They do have a new feature called Padlet Backpack, which is a paid service that will give you... Uh, the option to uh, control student accounts if you want to have student accounts and that sort of thing. But for the most part, I don't really think you need them. But, you know, your your use may differ than, differ than mine. Um, so it is very basic. Padlet is just this, just a blank canvas. You can double-click, write your name, write, today I learned that propane costs two dollars and ninety nine two dollars and ninety seven cents per pound okay. so that's what I learned today uh, and for a, and for a lot of the time I would just use Padlet for that very purpose with my students just a quick exit ticket I want to know what did you learn today. Double click, put that message on the wall, and move on. I've also used it a lot for. Okay, we're starting a new unit on a in my class. I want you to share something you already know about this and something you think you might know about it, and then I'd send them off on the internet to go and do a little research, and then come back and share something that they learned during that during that time while they're researching on the internet. We would talk about that. And there's a couple of ways to go about setting this up. So first things first, over on the right-hand side, let's modify this wall. Um, let's just call this one uh, Study Time with Mr. Byrne. Share something you have learned this week. So you can see in the upper left corner here the the title is now appearing and the subtitle and I might even put directions in here. Double click slash double tap because this will work just fine on an iPad or on a Android tablet. All right, so double click, double tap to add your note. Okay. I like to put in a little portrait of myself, so I use this one all the time. Uh, you can also upload your own. Uh, we can change the wallpaper. And this is one of the things that I think people overlook about Padlet is that 
while there is some fun different layouts in the background, you can also upload your own background as well. Uh, there's one called My Tasks. I like, I like that one. That's the one I've I have used in the past for kind of a no want learn chart, all kinds of fun stuff. But you can also upload your own, um, and one that I've uploaded a few times is just a screenshot of a grid. So I just made a grid in, in my case, in Google Drive, but you could also do it in, in Microsoft Word or Pages or whatever word processing program you want. Uh, I just took, made a grid, took a screenshot of it, and uploaded it, and used that as the background and drag the notes into various places on the grid. So it gives kids a little bit of organization because when we have a whole bunch of notes here, uh, if you want to start writing notes now, I'll put it in the chat room, you can. Um, if you want to start writing notes right now, it would get a little bit chaotic. Uh, so let's change the layout and we'll make the layout a grid format. So it's going to snap to a grid or we can make the layout a stream format and everything will appear uh, just chronologically in a stream. Okay. So we can go about that or free form will allow me to drag and drop and move things around on the screen. So you have a bunch of options there uh, for your layout. So I put my layout back to I put the layout back to free form just for now. So yeah. And let's take a look at our privacy options for the classroom. I think that's a really important part that uh, people are not aware of in Padlet. So right now this thing is theoretically available to anyone in the world. If I put this on Twitter right now, we could have people joining in and writing all kinds of random stuff. Uh, and that's fine you know, for right now uh, with us as adults. But in the classroom setting, I might use the option for password protected and I'll say if it's password protected you can write only if you have the password and I might set a classroom password like class <laughs> or something really obvious that my students will remember uh, and then I'll take that out and say you can only view when I'm done writing so you know maybe I'm going to use it for the class period I don't want kids writing outside of class time. So I'll change it back to can view only. And you can mix and match and change this around. I'm, I'm leaving this as hidden link right now can write on the wall. You also have the option down here to moderate posts. Uh, I'm not using post moderation right now. You might want to use it in your classroom. Bear in mind that if you use, if you use post moderation uh, your users will have to sign in uh, and you will have to m approve everything before it goes live on your wall. So it kind of take kind of takes some of the spontaneity out of it when you do that. Uh, but it, it is a good option, particularly at the the elementary and middle school level where kids are still, you know, even in the high school level, where kids are still learning what is appropriate to post and what isn't appropriate to post online. So we'll save that. Now, one last thing about Padlet that I think gets overlooked a lot is the option to embed it into another site. So, and when you embed it into another site, it works just like it does as a standalone page. In fact, let's just put it in. Uh, we'll just put it in a blog post right now. Uh, we'll we'll put it right here in blog. We'll put it right here in Blogger, and uh, I'll put it on my website. And of course, when I do this, it'll get automatically tweeted out to everyone. Uh, sample Padlet wall. And say so this is a sample Padlet wall for tonight's webinar. Now I'll just put it in the HTML real quick, boom, and publish it. I don't need to put it on Google Plus. Uh, <laughs> but 
but that Padlet wall will load and anyone can double click on it and write on it within the uh, within the blog post. So yep, lots of lots of options there. In, in fact, I did this in, uh, in a classroom blog the other day. I'm trying to remember which blog I did it in now. Uh, we can do it again here in, in a classroom blog. It, it works really well as a, you know, share something you learned today. Just post it like that. Share your thoughts, we'll call it, and publish it. Now the the nice thing about putting it in your in your blog is that if you're already using a blog platform, if you're using Google Sites, if you're using Weebly, uh, any of those options, uh, it will. Uh, you know, it's not a new link for kids. You don't have to send kids to this link. You send them to your classroom blog, your classroom website. Uh, it doesn't embed into Edmodo in the same way. You could link to it in Edmodo, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't embed into Edmodo in the same way, uh, unless something's changed recently with that. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't been in my Edmodo account in probably two months. It's probably been January was the last time I was in my own Edmodo account. Uh, but yeah, so you can embed it. If you're using a WordPress blog, the embed code is just a little bit different, a little quirky, but there it is. And then you also have down here in the bottom right corner, you have this uh, QR code. So again, if you're using QR codes, uh, using mobile, you know, iPads, ta whatever tablets, and you have a QR code reader, away you go. So cool. So we got some nice nice thoughts there. Yeah, if you're using Blogger, it's going to work great in Blogger. Uh, it doesn't work so well in Edgy Blogs, I'll tell you. And the reason for that is that Edgy Blogs um, blocks a lot of third-party embed codes unless you have a pro account. So unless you're a subscriber to Edgy Blogs, it doesn't embed there. But all right, all right. So let's play a couple of games here. Let's. Let's look at review games. I'm going to start with the one that's been around for a long time, long time in the internet world. Uh, <laughs> I first saw it in, I first saw it in the summer of 2011, uh, and that's Socrative. Now, or Socrative. I have met their founders on multiple occasions, and they themselves say Socrative and Socrative equally. Uh, and they really say, we don't care what you call it as long as you use it. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that's their position on it. We're going to go to the teacher. I'm going to use the teacher login side here uh, and sign in. And you'll notice they also have a Google integration. So if you're a Google App School and you're on every Google account, you can sign in that way. But um, I'm old school in that I've been using it since before they had a Google integration. And I just have a standalone account. But either way, it works. Uh, so here's my account as the teacher. There's my room number. It's 52234. I have a bunch of activities that we can do. And I can also go in and manage quizzes and create a new quiz of my own. So let's just do a quick how do I how do you create a quiz? So let's create a quiz and we'll call this one fun stuff random stuff. Yeah they launched a new snowy look. The snowy look is uh, is technically still in beta. Uh, I think their their official launch date is on Monday. Uh, but Carol, Carol, you've been using it, so that's cool. Uh, has anyone else been using it in this snowy look? Yeah. So let's do some fun stuff, random stuff. Here's my quiz. Uh, quiz sharing number. This is for teachers. Uh, 
if you want other teachers to be able to import their quizzes into their accounts, you can say yes, share your quiz, it'll be assigned a number, and then you can give that quiz number to another teacher and he or she can use your quiz as well. Uh, I'm not going to share this one just because it's going to be random stuff that no one's ever going to care about. Uh, <laughs> all right, you know, I can leave it on too. Heck, what, what the heck, I'll leave it on. Uh, so let's add a quick, let's add a quick multiple choice question. Uh, let's say, okay. what is this dog's name? People who have uh, who have followed my blog for a while will probably be able to guess guess these. Uh, so let's say there's one one option. The other option is Max. The other option is Benji, and the other option will be Fenway. I'm not going to have an answer choice E. Don't need that. Let's go ahead and add an image. We'll use that dog. The answer will be Max. I'm turning on. I'm giving away the answer right now. Uh, I'm showing you how you make a quiz. Uh, that's the answer to it. That's the correct answer. We can add another. We can add a true/false question. We might say that uh, the temperature in Maine today was above freezing. And correct answer is true. If I want, I love that you can put in an explanation for kids. Uh, so you want to put in an explanation, you can say, um, you yeah. know, check the historical weather pattern at NOAA.gov. And so then kids can get that little bit of information. I got my little two question quiz. I'm really happy with it. Let's save and exit. Hopefully that's save and exit. There we go. There we go. So I have some quizzes here. We have fun stuff, random stuff. Let's do that one. Right now you will all get 100% on it. That's going to be great. When we decide to use it later, let's go to my dashboard. So let's start a quiz. We're going to start a quiz called Fun Stuff, Random Stuff. Okay. Uh, we're going to do this at a student pace without feedback, without immediate feedback. I'm not going to disable student names. I'm not going to randomize questions. There's just too few questions here to go and away we go. All right. So to participate in this quiz now, I'm going to ask you to go to Socrative.com, sign in as a student, and use room 52234. Vicky's already off and running on it, which is awesome. So if you go to Socrative.com, room 52234, you'll be able to play along and and take the quiz. In fact, I'm even going to play along on a separate computer here in my office. I'm going to sign in as a student. And it looks like, is anyone able to actually take the questions? We have, we have people signed in, they are able to actually take the questions. And I'm finding right now that on my own login screen, 
Socrative is kicking me out. There we go. All right. Okay, so a little quirk with Socrative right now. That's fun times. Yeah, it's having some issues. Um, all right. Well, let's let's kill that quiz. It might be might be just be might just be that quiz. I did get a little warning message that it didn't like one of my questions. So um, I'm gonna kill that quiz and try a different one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And we can actually see, you can, if you're looking at my screen, you can see that uh, it's really slowed down on my computer here. Oh, now it's running. It's running really slowly. Let's go back to the dashboard here, and yeah, it's running really, really slowly, and I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm wondering if so it was working really well about two hours ago when I did my test run through on this. Uh, I'm guessing that Socrative is running that update that Carol and I were talking about. It's transferring to a new, a new interface, which was supposed to happen on Monday, but uh, yeah, so. That's a great demonstration of Socrative. <laughs> we'll try it one more time. We'll just try it with the space race real quick and see if it see if it works any better. I have a little three question demo quiz here. I don't remember what's on it because it's been so long since I used that one. But I'm going to assign you to three random teams. Uh, we're going to auto assign teams and let's see if we can start the activity. Uh, And if it's too slow, then we'll just move on. Yeah, it's just running way too slow. All right. So we're going to kill Socrative for now. Uh, I'm hoping that it's uh, just a quirk of their updates. And it'll be better soon. Yeah, they both need a really, as um, as Laura just pointed out, they both need strong internet connections. Um, we'll just we'll run a Kahoot activity here, and after Kahoot, we will wrap up with uh, with Dash eighty one, which is a new player in the in the field as well. Uh, I met the the teacher who's really developing it, which is uh, cool. I love I love programs that are developed by teachers for teachers because they actually get it. Uh, <laughs> can't tell you how many times I get emails from developers who are like, this is going to revolutionize education, and then it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> which is why I prefer having services that are from, from teachers. So, so this is my Kahoot account here on the, the, the teacher side. If you've never used it before, uh, this is where you will create a, create a quiz or a survey. Um, I have a whole bunch here and what's called my cahoots. Yeah, uh, some uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh college said yeah, quiz quizzes quit or quizzes. Yeah, that's one that I have had a couple people recommend as well. Um, and I just personally haven't had time to really use it in a in a large group environment to test it. Uh, I can't tell you that Kahoot I have run with up to 500 people after 500 people uh, down at the NC Ties conference. I know we have a couple people here from North Carolina tonight. Uh, the NC Ties conference, we had something like 600 people try to get into one, and we killed it. But, uh, yeah, so let's take a look at my Kahoots. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I think teachers aren't aware of when they set them up. Let's make a new one right here. I'll make a quick quiz. Um, we'll just call this the April Kahoot. So you can set the timer. 
sorry, I didn't catch the name of who just said about the, the, the timer factor. Uh, Lauren, yeah, you can you can vary the time limit on it. Uh, the default is 30 seconds, so you can vary it, make it make it a little bit longer or shorter. In fact, I'm gonna make this one short right now. Uh, let's just call this one. Uh, yeah. Which dog is barking in the background? I'm not sure if anyone else can hear that, but one of my dogs is currently barking out the window. Um, we give it 10 seconds. I'll use a picture. We'll say, is it Max? Is it Morrison? Is it Fenway? Or is it Benji? And Max w would be the correct answer. Let's add another question. And we'll say, um, what is the building in this picture? Okay. And again, I'll put in a Put in a picture that I recently took. Yeah, if you're teaching, if you're teaching math or science, and you want to take a screenshot of a, of a formula or an equation, you want to put that in there. Uh, you could certainly do that as well. I'm going to set this one to be 10 seconds as well. The reason I'm setting it to be so short is just because we're going to play it here as a uh, as a group. All right. So, yeah. Try to identify the picture feature, the item feature, the building featured in the picture. Uh, you know, we'll call this one the Brisbane Opera House, the Sydney Opera House, we can call it the Oprah Opera House, just because I like to have fun with words. Or we could say the Burn Opera House. And let's save and continue it. All right, so we have a two-question quiz. I love it. Let's go ahead and use it. Okay. Call it a sample quiz. Uh, I want to make this one public. So any other teacher who wants to use this quiz can certainly use it. They'll just go to the public cahoots and find one that they want to use. Uh, this is just training session. Let's go ahead and save it. And Carol's pointing out a point, and I've, I've had it happen as well. Uh, that if kids are on their own cell networks with, Carol, I'm assuming that it's on a cell network. Uh, Yeah, I've had that. Yeah, yeah, the wire. Oh, really? On the wireless network? Interesting. I've only had it happen on the, the cell network. Okay, so we're going to skip the, the cover image for this quiz. We don't need that. Uh, let's go ahead and play this thing. All right. So I want you to play along, and as to play along as a as a student in this game. Uh, you're going to go to kahoot.it. When I, when I launch this, the room number will pop up on the screen. Uh, I'm going to show, show the game pin here as a teacher. I'm not going to random. Uh, uh, let's randomize answers, randomize questions. There's only two questions, so it's not a big deal. And let's go ahead and launch it. So now you as a student can play along by going to kahoot.it and using the game pin, which is really, really long. Look at that, we've got a few players.
And for anyone who's used this before but hasn't noticed it, if there's an inappropriate name that pops in, you as a teacher can kick that name out by clicking on it. So. Let's go ahead and get it started. All right, so which dog is barking in the background? It was Max. And this is Jeff to to you is the leader right now. All right. And what is the building in this picture? All right. Awesome. Look at that. We have our winner. All right, Mrs. Jeff to you is the big winner. Points are totally fictitious. Uh, we can get you stickers. I've got lots of stickers, in fact. Lots and lots of Free Tech for Teachers stickers if you want them. Uh, yeah, I've got lots of those. Uh, and Deb, Deborah pointed out that all, you saw, all she saw was shapes and no options. Yeah, that is one of the, the quirks of this. In the, in the classroom, what you would do is you'll project what, what you saw here on my screen, and the kids on their screens will see uh, just the shape option choices. So it's a, it's a little bit different using it in this web webinar environment. Uh, in the classroom, you project your screen. That's what the kids see up in the front of the room. And on their devices, they just see those, those answer choices. So they kind of have to pay attention to the screen and the in their own screen as well. Um, so, all right. Um, there we go. Yeah, you uh, you could split screen it if you wanted to. Um, if you're familiar with, with doing that, uh, I forget what the keyboard short. There's a keyboard shortcut for it on the Mac. I forget what that is, but yeah, you could you could do a split screen thing if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, it's great as an exit ticket activity. Um, I'll point out for teachers. Do I go into the go into public cahoots and just search for all kinds of stuff? I mean, you want to do a, a quiz about Passover, okay, or a quiz about Easter, great. A quiz about April fun facts, all right? Let's do that one. Let's duplicate that one. Okay. Right. So I'm going to duplicate that one. Maybe I'm going to edit some of the questions. Maybe some of the questions aren't going to be great for my students. You know, I want to look it over before I before I do it or or whatever. I'll go through the questions and you know I can go in and edit something if I wanted to right. and save and continue. Right. I might even mix it up a little bit, customize it for myself. Great, and now that now that's a quiz that I can use in my account, uh, as well as um, anyone else. So, uh, great little option there. All right, so I want to wrap things up here with one last tool that um, some of you may not be fami as familiar with. And that's 81-dash.com. Again, 81-dash.com is a tool developed by by a teacher for teachers. I met him last summer at the ISTE conference. Uh, really nice guy. So here I am as a teacher. I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account. Now, also, the one drawback to it is that kids do have to have account. You do have to have student accounts in order to use it. Um, let's just create a room here. We'll call this one Free Tech for Teachers. We'll set a room expiration of one day and create it. And so now there's a new room. And if you wanted to try to join it right now, it would take you to a screen that I'll 
I'll bring up here. It'll take you to a screen to log in and or register. And so that's kind of the drawback to it is that you do have to have students register even if you use the guest user. Guest user still has to put in a username and a password. Uh, so that's kind of one of the drawbacks to the 81 dash. Um, that said, uh, it has a lot of features within it. Uh, you, can, you can write in your messages and say, you know, good evening class. But you can also upload files if you want to, sh to share a file in here. It doesn't have to be a picture file. It could be a, a PDF, a Word document. Uh, a spreadsheet. If you want to share a spreadsheet, uh, there's a picture of a picture of a cat. You know, say we want to put in a picture of a cat. And say, look at that, look at that cute cat. <laughs> so you have you have some options there. You also have this section over here on the right hand side that I really like called tasks, and that allows you to set up tasks for your students. Uh, so. Let's say peer editing of essays is today's task. Apparently it doesn't like that task. There it is. Pick a second. So peer editing of essays as today's task. I duplicated it by accident, so I'll delete it. I'll delete one of them. So that my kids can then go into the room and they can see it, and they can see that information laid out for them. Uh, notes are longer pieces. Notes are not part of the chat up here. They're the things like, okay, make sure you you can write a list of. Um, Reminders for the week, for example. You might say important dates. And then you write in a whole bunch of dates that are going to be in that section there. So it's a little bit more uh, like the Tozzle tool than it is like the like a pure back channel tool. There's a lot of things we can we can do within 81 dash. Uh, Drawback to it is that kids do have to sign in, so it's not something you're going to create on the fly. Uh, whereas with today's Meet or Padlet, you can create it on the fly. You know, the, the inspiration hits you that you want to have a back channel, and you go, "All right, let's let's create one." 81 Dash doesn't quite have that kind of uh, that instant effect to it. All right, well, it's eight o'clock here on the East Coast. Um, Angela, so students don't have to have an email for 81 Dash, but they do have to create a password and a username for it. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to just say thanks to everyone who spent the hour with me. I hope it was beneficial for you. Um, it's been fun for me. I wish that Socrative had worked a little bit better, but that's how these things go sometimes. They don't always go as we plan. Uh, yeah, it's midnight in Iceland. It's 5 a. It's 5:30 a.m. in India. So, uh, yeah, Deb, uh, Deb just has a question about 81 Dash. You could set up usernames and passwords for the kids ahead of ahead of time. Um, oh, Kathy just asked a great question here. Sorry, Kathy. Uh, it, that's about data collection. Yes, you can uh, you can download or export a record of all the answers in Kahoot. So you can see how kids did that way. Socrative, when it runs correctly, allows kids to put in their names and you can download a report of that. You can download a PDF of Padlet. You can download a transcript of today's meet. You can download a transcript of 81 Dash as well. Uh, so you can collect data that way. Uh, well, if you are here from Australia, thanks Sue. That's awesome. Uh, 2 a.m. in Italy. Wow, you guys are dedicated. Thank you so much. Uh, people all over the world. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Uh, yeah, so the, the recording of this, I am going to process the recording of it tonight. It takes, it's a massive file. It takes a couple hours to get to get converted. 
I'll be posting it on my on my blog at freetechforteachers.com tomorrow afternoon. So thanks everyone. Really enjoyed it. Uh, and feel free to shoot me an email if you need to follow up with anything. So, uh, and Deb, how often do I offer this sort of thing? Um, kind of when the mood strikes me for, for this sort of webinar, um, but for more formal uh, PD, I, I do this quite a bit, uh, and just and I try to post them as, as much as I can. Uh, last shameless plug, uh, at practicaledtech.com, I have a weekly newsletter uh, where I'll be sharing this and where I sh practical ed tech is where I share all of my PD announcements. So uh, the next in-person one that, I, that I'm doing is in May, uh, but online ones, I have another one starting in mid-April. So uh, I post all those things there. So thanks everyone. Have a great night and I'll See you on the interweb somewhere. <laughs>